I wanted to talk about, because this is Homeroom University related. Did Joe Budden use them? 100%. Whoa, wait. All right. No, no, wait. You need to take ISO on you. How did Joe Budden use Homeroom University? Well, I've said this before. I said this actually on my show. This was a master class of how being to get used by your ops. Like, <laughs> I didn't include the Rory method in there, but you also have Rory, Charlemagne, uh, Adam22, you, Danny. Mm -hmm. They were so close enough to it would make people feel it, but also far enough to where it's like you couldn't say, but you my man, why would you do that? Mm. So it was a very big thing for them to be able to take some guys who, well, they had got under 30K in subscribers when this happened. Uh, to take these guys I think under and 20. put them on a platform of millions. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, yeah. What was the tactics? Like, what were the instances from the show where you felt like, all right, this is feeling like kind of like a play by Joe to use them as a sounding board? Honestly, I don't think it was anything in the content. I think it's the nature of them working together, working mm -hmm. in tandem with them. Joe being the person who says, I want all of y'all to fail, but I'm bringing in these three young guys from North Carolina, and I'm showing you I can turn anybody into a star. Rory, I'm looking at you when I, when I bring them up here. Maul, I'm looking at you when I bring them up here. Uh, any of my competition who has yet to do something like this, I'm looking at you. You know, Adam had you on No Jumper. I'm looking at you. Yep. you know, I'm, I'm showing you what I can do from guys who are, are nowhere. I've, and I've always said Joe had this power. I knew Joe could do something like this, take guys who how hungry who have a passion for the for the career and make them bigger than probably they should be yeah i'm doing like i'm looking at it because i remember that episode real well all of everybody like he takes a shot and says i talk too much when he was on the pod right <laughs> um yeah which is crazy he take yeah i know right the pot calling the kettle black and then he takes a shot at adam 22 and says um that whole network is in the dumpster um and then he takes another shot and says rory's becoming a better podcaster but i feel like all of the rory big ups is coming at the expense of mall right so it's mm -hmm. very much so trying to big them up at and make mall seem like beneath them and we all know that the genesis of the breakup was that Maul chose to side with Rory. And at the beginning of that breakup, he very much positioned Rory as the slimy, sleazy dude. But now it's like he can't get back cool with Maul because Maul crossed the line. Well, that's not what the, that's the manipulation that we talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and then furthermore, just the idea, like a lot of people were saying, I think that whole week I was dealing with people like, he flew Menace out before you and all this other stuff. And I'm like, well, I think that was before the No Jumper interview. So it was kind of like mm -hmm. this um, passive aggression. And on those spaces, Joe was saying things like, I could make men as hotter than you, Danny. And I do think, I don't think, I don't know. It's kind of crazy to, because Joe is up there, right, in terms of profile. But yeah. so when you talk about him playing YouTubers against each other that are like way smaller, people kind of laugh at you and be like, why would he care? But I'm like, this guy likes yeah. to make things weird. Like, this is his thing. Like, I don't think people put enough emphasis on the discussion that he paid tickets for them to go out there. Mm. Like, that's not, that doesn't happen. Yeah. Usually, if someone invites you into it, you handle your own. Like, that's what makes that shit a lot nastier than what we really could deep, dig deep <laughs> into this. Like, he literally paid for your conversation in a way that I wanted to be favorable towards me. Mm. Like, there's nobody else can look at it without that way. You can't, you would not think they're going to go up there. And again, I've said this before where they've said things about people on those couches that were disparaging. And you think that I'm going to pay you now and you're going to come here and keep it the same real way? No. Like you look like you're in Joe's pocket. Oh, you, you're waking it up. You're waking it up. I'm just saying it does. Yeah. It looks like, for the fact, like my thing is this, Danny, if you told me, hey, I want you to sit down and we do something, not, you're not paying for me to come up there not even if you had it like i'm gonna come up here on my own my own muscle and then we'll sit down as equals and have a conversation yeah. but the moment that you pay for me i got a trick out for you now mm -hmm. i gotta dance a little bit for you and yeah. that's just a real that's real when anytime that happens that's why when he said that i said you should have never said that out loud what did he say what did aj he said that joe flew him out 
They paid for the tickets. Okay, so to you, that signaled something. Mm. Yeah, that's nasty work. <laughs> that's nasty work. So that didn't signal that to you. Wait. So let's outline this because obviously, as somebody who is in contact with this situation, I might know things. But you saying this was said on Spaces? Yeah, he said that. He said Joe flew him out. Somebody asked him how did they get up there. He said Joe flew bought the tickets for him. Okay. Well, well, there you have it. We're doing the science. Um, do you think the podcast started changing how they speak about Joe after that? See, the thing, I, I, I rarely listen to their Joe clips. I always listen to their clips about, because I go to Joe, for Joe, I go to your content. Because most of the time, that's what they're doing is playing your video. Uh, so I usually go there for stuff I don't know about, like no jumper mm. stuff. Mm. Uh, but I don't really see them talk about Joe in a disparaging way when I do look up their content about Joe. Okay. It's very up and up, pa father, he that guy. Yeah. Very little critical analysis. So that's why I don't really I stay away from their Joe content. I just I, I, I want to learn about other things that I don't know about. So that's what I listen to them for. I will say that I feel like with the pod, when they talk about Joe, now when they talk about him doing sleazy stuff, they reframe it as if it's like some moral thing. Like it's like cool. Like, mm -hmm. You know, like, yeah, man, Joe, Joe um told Rory he was a piece of crap and he kicked him in the stomach and he slapped him in the face. But that's like come on that's joe like joe's gonna be joe and i feel like that's what that's they're doing. nasty <laughs> that's nasty that's vile <laughs> those men talk about being righteous on their show a lot oh they do that ain't righteous <laughs> yeah they talk about that okay that's not righteous my man <laughs> that's, that's nasty yeah and um but i get i feel like they kind of sort of do that with adam but adam is also someone who has helped them out i think all of these guys are mm -hmm. fasc fascinated with the potters about potters but yeah. We'll, we'll it's a proxy war. Yeah, definitely. And they're, we're all pawns. It's to someone. This fine video was brought to you by Danny from The Stop on behalf of Stop Productions. If you like the video, please hit the like button, comment, or subscribe. Additionally, the thank you button has been enabled. If you want to say thanks, just say thanks on the thank you button. Any donations are greatly appreciated. Danny from the Stop.